Dark Souls. Dark, 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 Dark Souls. Souls. For some people, the games are... Oh, magnificent. For others, the games are... You must have poor taste. Regardless of how you feel about the Souls series, if you've ever played or seen a game that reminded you of Dark Souls, there's a good chance that you were playing a Souls-like. In this series, I like to play Souls-like that are generally pretty obscure. Now, a lot of these games I play are in fact obscure for a reason, but that's not always the case. Sometimes I come across hidden gems that just got overlooked. If any of this sounds interesting, here is episode 6 of Steam Dumpster Diving. All right, what are three words that every girl wants to hear? Say it with me, Bloodborne on PC. And uh, we did it, it's here. It's finally here, is what I wish I could be telling you. But until then, we have Yarn Town, a free download on itch.io. It says it's a Zelda-like tribute to Bloodborne. So we get a Souls-like, Zelda-like. Let's check it out. Here we are in, in Yarnum. All right, let's see if I can land like a visceral attack. I think that's actually in this game. I think that was it. There's not really an animation for it, but I think that was the visceral attack. Oh fuck, here we go. Alright, he's uh... Unfortunately a little stuck. Woo! Oh man, did I break the boss? Why did he break? Is he stuck again? How's he stuck again? Is he, is he gonna turn into a werewolf? Nope. No werewolf. Hi, I'm Max. This is the end. But thanks for playing. I've only been playing for like... 10, maybe 15 minutes? Maybe- hold on. Maybe I missed the Cleric Beast. I could probably go back and find that. Oh, I totally did miss the Cleric Beast, didn't I? Yep. Here we go. Here we go. Hell yeah. So as like a proof of concept free demo, it's very cool seeing Bloodborne being transformed into this visual style of, you know, 2D Zelda games like A Link to the Past. As a game though, it's it's very, very rough. You know, if the developer is planning on like taking this a step further, the combat needs a lot of work. Whenever you have one game and you transfer it over to another game, it's very cool to see. I'm kind of a sucker for that kind of thing. But as it stands currently, there's unfortunately not a lot here to see, <laughs> uh, both in terms of you know content and the game itself, but very, very cool idea. Unworthy. This is another 2D Metroidvania Souls-like, and I believe it was made by just one guy. So at a glance, this game didn't exactly grab my attention. I was pretty turned off by the extremely minimalist visual style, and to be perfectly honest, under normal circumstances, I almost certainly would have passed by this game without a second thought based on the screenshots alone. To pile onto this, once I started actually playing, two big things stuck out to me. Your character is extremely slow, and there's no jump button. Now if you've played even a couple Metroidvanias, you'll probably know that the mobility of your character through their speed and just the ability to jump is absolutely essential to the experience. So all that being said, would you believe me if I told you that I actually really like this game? I went in expecting to hate it, but I quickly realized that the combat was solid, the bosses were creative, and it was all just put together really well. Let's go over the basics real quick. It's got all the Dark Souls staples. A dodge roll, a sword and shield, a grim dark setting, an Estus flask, currency that you lose when you die, etc, etc. This is indeed a Souls-like game. Now initially, I was struggling to put into words why I enjoyed this game so much while finding myself less interested in similar games. And after thinking about it, I think more than anything, it comes down to level design. This game just has great level design, both on a macro scale through the connection of different zones and especially on the micro scale with the individual enemy encounters. Simply put, these encounters are thoughtfully put together and often memorable. Unfortunately, this is something that's kind of hard to show visually or even explain why exactly it works, but you'll just have to trust me when I say that this element of the game is actually really good. And without spoiling too much, another part that I found really enjoyable was how most of the upgrades you get double as upgrades for both combat and exploration. For example, you get this bow that lets you teleport around and reach new places, but it's also just a bow that can be used to shoot guys in the face. I love this design for Metroidvanias where upgrades have more than one use. Also, to talk about the visuals again real quick, I still think they're the weakest part of this game, but they still work pretty well and give the game a strong sense of style. Like fuck, even dying in this game looks cool. Now, I don't want to overhype this game. Is it the next Hollow Knight? No. But I had fun with the four and a half hours it took me to beat. It's underrated as hell, and it's a shame that it's seemingly gone completely unnoticed by the community. 
All right, we got Neverinth. I believe this is a Chinese game, and I believe it's also a roguelike Souls-like. So I'm pretty sure it's going for the same thing that Arborea was going for, if you saw my last video. But yeah, let's just jump right in. All right, here we are. So right away, I'm noticing some really uh, interesting physics whenever I take even a single step. Ooh, that's kind of cool. So right away, a cool mechanic I noticed is you got like your standard attacks, right? But you can also do this, where they're faster but it costs more stamina and it costs a little bit of your health too. I don't know, that's like a neat idea for like a, a trade-off. Wait, so my, my running has a shockwave now? Can I like shockwave this guy? Oh, hell yeah. I can just stun lock him with my run. I think I found the boss room. He's putting his goo everywhere. This guy almost looks like he could be a bloodborne enemy. Almost. You know what this guy is? I got it. It's the Cleric Beast mixed with Ridley from Metroid. Hell yeah. Whoa. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh yes. I have 140k experience and each level up has cost me 500 right now. So this is going to take me a while. I just want to play the game, dude. I'm trying to spend this as fast as possible. Oh! This guy is straight up just using a book to hit me with. Oh, shit! What is that? What are you doing? Go away. Go away. <laughs> he just hit himself with that. Does this ground not have a texture? All right. All right, guess I'll just go fuck myself. Under development, oops, you've completed all the content. Really? That's so little, There, there's literally only two levels? All right, I've gotten a lot of crystals to refine. Oh good, I unlocked, uh, I unlocked some Tetris pieces. Okay, I heard you were talking shit. Alright, I'm gonna be blunt, this game has a lot it needs to work on. On top of some obvious balancing issues and weird design choices, it's desperately lacking enemy variety, build variety, room variety. It's not properly utilizing any of the strengths that come from making your game a roguelike. That being said, the foundation here, I see potential with it, you know? I think that this game could be improved to the point where like, maybe I would recommend it at some point, but in its current state, definitely not. All right, next up we got Juice World. This is a free download on itch.io. Um, at a glance, it looks fucking wild. I never would have found this game if not for a few comments recommending it to me. Juice World is sort of Souls-like, kind of a bit. I'm loving the confidence with this comment, really sold me. But yeah, let's just jump right in. This is a very compelling main menu screen, I gotta say. First question, what is Juice? Oh fuck. Uh, juice is everything or Juice is stupid? Uh, I think Juice is pretty stupid. Wrong answer. <gasps> Prepare to die. I understand why this is a Souls like now. Oh, hello. Okay. So wait, I can just fly? Whoa, what the? I'm flying. All right. Oh, hell yeah. Dude, this is just like Die by the Sword. Hold Q to feed juice door. Okay. Oh. There's like leveling up in this game? Okay. Um, Sword. Give me the sword. Rune long sword. This weapon was made for poning noobs in the wilderness. Is this a RuneScape reference? <laughs> so it's all about, we just gotta get the juice. Give me the juice. The swinging mechanic actually feels kind of good. What is that noise? What is that? What the fuck? <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Get me out. <gasps> Wait, is that a pineapple? Wait, left click to pick up ordinary pineapple. There's just something off about this pineapple. Is there? Oh my. 
It's a gun! Yo, this is just like fucking, uh, this is like Donkey Kong 64 with like Donkey Kong coconut gun. But it's a pineapple gun. Oh my god, what did I do? What did I do? <laughs> the baby clowns have come out of it. Okay, I need to get the fuck out of here. I'm in clown territory. Let's go! There's a car? Yes. How do you... How do you win Juice World? Oh no. Oh my god. My eyes. Okay, I'm gonna assume that's it for Juice World then. I think it's just kind of... You wander around and... And that's it. Alright. There's one last thing I gotta do before I'm done with this game. Here we go. Alright, Juice World is a video game. Yes, you read that title card right. This is a Neopets game. Now, I don't really know shit about Neopets, but I do know that it's like a website where you take care of virtual pets, right? Like, they're supposed to be actual pets. So yeah, it's kind of weird to see a spin-off PS2 game from 2005 with anthropomorphic animals instead of the usual pet deal. Like, that's kind of bizarre, right? But anyway, why am I even talking about this game for this video? Well, it's got a sword, it's got a shield, it's got a swamp level. It's ticking nearly all the boxes essential to being a Dark Souls game. So, here we go. And you know, just because something is a kid's game, it doesn't mean it's bad. But this game is bad. Let me paint you a picture of my experience with this game. It starts off pretty basic. You're doing some chores around the farm, you're helping your mom fill a bucket with water, you're helping your dad get some pliers off the roof, but before long you got your wooden sword and you're off murdering bandits on your way to the castle to become a knight. You run into plenty of characters along the way, including a guy that totally just cop Shrek's whole thing by the way, and eventually you make it to the castle and after a few more chores you're ready to become a knight. But wait, you actually need your signed parent's permission before you can become one. And that's a fun gag, right? Especially given the Neopets context, I imagine that's how signing up for an actual Neopets account works. But yeah, it's a fun gag up until you realize that you literally need to run all the way back to the start of the game and get actual permission. And like, it's kind of a long run back, like annoyingly so. And then once you finally get permission, you have to run all the way back to the castle again. Thus emerges the pattern of this game seemingly intent on wasting your time whenever possible by having you constantly run across the map with no fast travel. If I had to guess, I'd say roughly 80% of my time playing was spent just running from point A to point B and I don't even think I'm exaggerating. This other time, I had to run across the map to this bridge, but when I got there, the bridge was broken and the game was like, oh yeah, I guess you gotta run all the way back to where you just came from and get it fixed. Neopets The Darkest Fairy is the video game form of leaving your house, remembering 10 minutes later that you left your oven on, driving back to your house to turn it off, and then leaving again. And like, fine, whatever. I could probably stomach this if the rest of the game had some charm or the gameplay was serviceable, but uh, nah. <laughs> Without going into detail so this video doesn't turn into a 20 minute takedown of a 15 year old Neopets game, the combat is more or less just mashing the attack button, and the platforming is there, I guess? Like, all you have is a basic jump, so this is the extent of the platforming you'll be doing. This game is technically a 3D platformer in the same way that Burger King is technically food. Also, spoiler alert, a few hours in, there's a big twist where there's actually a second playable character. You get to be this girl with magic powers. Naturally, this allows for some incredible magic combat gameplay. Now, if I hated it this much, why did I keep playing? There's actually a really simple answer. The cutscenes. The cinematics are fantastic and act as breadcrumbs to keep me going. Let me give you a little taste. We must leave quickly before- no! Now tell me you wouldn't have to keep playing after seeing that, regardless of how miserable the gameplay was before it. Also, one more closing thought that I found pretty funny. This game has werewolf enemies, but in a world where your character is already an anthropomorphic wolf, this means the werewolves look normal, but they just don't wear shirts. So yeah, I think this is going to be the first and last Neopets game I ever play. Alright, next up we got Raven Sword Shadowlands. This game was released on mobile in early 2013, and then a few months later it came out on PC, and then a few months after that, in 2014, it came out on the Ouya. Now as much as I would love to play a game ported from mobile on the Ouya, I unfortunately could not find a copy, so we're going to sell it for second best with the PC version. Fingers crossed I have a really good feeling about this one. Yeah, let's do it. Holy fuck, dude. What has my life become? 
I got him. Oh my god, okay. I get to make my character now. It is I, Gary of Rivia. Now we can play the game. Oh no. This is what happens when you block. It moves the whole fucking camera. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I'm riding him. I'm so good at this game. Ooh. Level up, baby. Hell yeah, let's go. I did it. Worth it. Rat on a stick? Costs 600 gold. God, I wish I could buy that. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this shit. Fuck this shit. Oh my god! Where'd they come from? Jesus Christ. This is fucked. <laughs> Alright, you know what? Let's go. Let's go. It's done. I've done it. <laughs> oh shit, dude, maybe I'll have enough gold to buy that rat on a stick now. Here we go, baby. Rat on a stick. There's no rat! It's just fire! I paid 600 gold for just a stick! <laughs> it didn't even come with the rat! That's where I draw the fucking line. I'm done playing this game. <sighs> Zero out of ten. Alright, so you've seen 2D Souls-like Metroidvanias, but have you seen Dark Devotion, a 2D Souls-like Metroidvania roguelike? I know it's a lot, but I genuinely don't know a better way to sum it up. First off, let me just say I love the look of this game. Of all the games I've played in this series, this one might best capture the atmosphere and tone of the Souls series. I'm also just a huge fan of the pixel art and animation. For what the game itself is, you'll be running through a dungeon, fighting guys, finding loot, and killing bosses. Standard stuff. Eventually though, you're gonna die, and that's where the roguelike element comes in. On death, you lose all your gear, but if you reach the boss, you get an optional checkpoint at the boss door. This allows you the choice of fighting through the dungeon again to get gear before challenging the boss, or to simply go straight to the boss with your starting gear. I was having fun with this system and using my starting gear until I reached a boss that felt borderline unbeatable without better gear. So this would require me to go through the dungeon again, but here's the problem with that. The dungeon layout isn't randomized. With roguelikes, the key draw of repeating runs is that you'll get new encounters and experiences each time. This game doesn't really have that, so the experience of repeating content became more tedious than fun for me. As cool and ambitious as this game is, I feel like the decision to make it a roguelike just doesn't mesh well with the rest of the design. So to be clear, I think this is a really solid game, it just has some layers of frustration and tedium that bring down the experience and will probably be grating for some people. By all means though, check it out for yourself. I like most everything else about this game, so there's a good chance you could really enjoy it. If nothing else, it's certainly pretty and unique. Ling, a road alone. Faced with tough enemies and fierce fights, it's not certain whether the young man can reach the... But what? Well, uh, we, we gotta play to find out, I guess. Yes, yeah, so we can walk. We got like a dash. And then we got this. What the fuck is this thing? Strike with your fist, do this three times and no enemy can resist. He's resisting! What do you mean no enemy can resist? He's resisting pretty hard. What the fuck is happening? <laughs> what the hell was that? That was so odd. Whoa, shit. Got a new desktop background now. Oh, there's a lot of guys. I can basically just swing the sword and not really have to even dodge, like, because there's so many. And there's such a big arc to the swing, you know? Whoa! What is that thing? <laughs> His chest is a face. Oh, please, 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 You can only hit this guy if you parry him, and the parry timing is so tight. You can't really just go off, like, the visual of, like, his swing. It feels very inconsistent to me. There we go. I think I got it. I got it, please. <laughs> that took an embarrassing amount of tries. There's just mines everywhere now. There's just mines everywhere. These are all mines. Oh my god, there's mines everywhere. There's so many mines. There's so many. 
I have to kill the- I have to kill all the enemies. <laughs> it's very simple and straightforward with, like, what you can do. It's, like, sadistically hard with the timing of everything and how much shit it throws at you. It's kind of neat, but... <laughs> can't say I'm a fan. Uh, so just out of curiosity, I glanced at the reviews, and... There are 209 reviews, but only two are in English. The one English review says this game is unfairly hard, but he gave it a positive review, so that's interesting. And I just, you know, I just want to see what the most recent Chinese review is. I just have curiosity. Let's check it out. It says, Operation is not smooth. There is no desire to play. I think I agree. I agree with that. Are you potentially trapped in a prison cell and looking for something to do? Please, leave me alone. Well, good news. Netflix is an option. Oh, then I am in luck. But here's the problem. Region locks. Let's say you're in the US like me, but you want to watch all three Lord of the Rings movies back to back to back. That 10 hour dream is unfortunately not going to happen. That poor bastard. Unless you were to say, click a single button and change your region to Canada, then you'd get access to all the movies Canadians have, including Lord of the Rings. Oh, really? So yeah, find out how you can get three months free by clicking the link in the description with expressvpn.com slash ironpineapple. Now, I can get back to work. <laughs> If you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. You're a real one. As always, I'd appreciate any suggestions for future videos, future games I can feature, and you know, just feedback in general, because this is still kind of like experimental for me. But yeah, thanks again and take it easy.